we've been exploring solving single variable quadratic inequalities that can be factored. We looked at a couple strategies when presented with these types of statements. Let's look at our options if we can't factor. We can use other methods you've likely encountered to find our roots, like completing the square and using the quadratic formula. And we'll finish with a special case where there are no roots. You likely learned to complete a perfect square to help solve or graph quadratic equations. We can use this method if factors can't be found, but we still get roots. They just might be a bit more complex. This method reinforces the need for a strong foundation of understanding, as all we're really doing is purposely manipulating the expression to be a trinomial that is a perfect square. Here's an example we can walk through. Perhaps easiest to see the logic with these by moving the constant term to the right. Now, make it an equation. Figure out what constant term to add to make this a trinomial that is a perfect square. We do this by dividing the b term in half and squaring that value. In this equation, the constant term we add is 4, which we must do to the right side to keep them equal. So now we can factor our modified expression to be x plus 2 all squared is equal to 7. And then apply the square root principle to find our zero points. And we get x is equal to negative 2 plus root 7 and negative 2 minus root 7. These are our zero points on the number line. We can test this before to see which intervals make the inequality true. The solution is shown here. If all else fails, use a quadratic formula, which is of course just a general formula solved for x. It could of course be used any time, but we will look for simpler options first. Using the quadratic formula makes the most sense if we can't factor, and creating the perfect square gets too complicated. Pause and try this example. Now substituting values for a, b, and c, we get the following. x is equal to 5 thirds and negative 5. Make these our zero points and test. We see we have the closed interval shown here and in interval notation. One more thing you may encounter solving single variable quadratic inequalities. It is entirely possible you may find a statement that has no zero points, like this one. These are expressions that give you imaginary values as you get negative square roots. In that case, the entire number line becomes the interval, and we can test any value on the line. If it makes the inequality true, it means that all real numbers are part of the solution. If false, then there are no values in the solution. Testing zero, we see that it's true. So all real numbers are the solution for this inequality. You should now have a pretty good understanding of how to solve single variable quadratic inequalities using a variety of strategies. You need to pick the method that works best for the question you're attempting to solve. This chart summarizes our exploring. We can test intervals from roots found by factoring, or for non-factorable expressions, we can make perfect squares, or use the quadratic formula to generate roots. We looked at a logic-based method to solve factorable examples, and acknowledged that in the case where there are no roots, there's only one interval to test. You see more and more as you go deeper into the realm of your math journey, the application of all the skills you've been developing for many years. You're hopefully experiencing this as you work through the variety of inequalities we've looked at. We'll get back to graphing our solutions 
as we check out two variable quadratic inequalities next.